quite all right. <laughs> Your mic's not up. All right. It being 6.02. It being 6.02, I call this January 16th meeting of the Ohio Planning Commission to order. Uh, Sherry, could we have a roll call, please? Chair Quosi? Here. Vice Chair Nolan? Here. Commissioners Lottis? Here. Powers? Here. Corbin and Jaggy L are absent, and we have one vacancy. Okay, but we do have a quorum. Um, there we go. Thank you, Ray. Um, as long as you're up, would yep. you lead us in the <laughs> Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> How's that coming? <laughs> Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Ray. Um, next item on the agenda is public communications, the time set aside during the Planning Commission meeting for members of the public to address the Planning Commission on items of city business other than scheduled agenda items. Uh, matters that raised this time may be briefly discussed by the Commission, will generally be referred to staff and or placed on a subsequent agenda. And other than for emergency items, no action can be taken. Uh, I don't see anyone but Jeremy back there. Is there anyone in the House who would like to speak during public communications? Seeing none, we will move on to the consent item. The minutes of the regular meeting of the Planning Commission, December 5th, and I presume we've all been through it. I would entertain a motion with regard to those minutes. Right. I will make a motion that we adopt the minutes from the uh, Planning Commission meeting of December 5th, 2018. S uh, second. A second? Uh, and I just have one uh, comment. Um, let's see. There was under the uh, Tesla um, Item two, uh, I'm ju it's just a, qu uh, a request if it could be done um, where, are the, where there's questions. So at the end, Commissioner Corbin uh, asked a question about who's, I, is it, is it uh, um, within protocol or what staff can do in terms of uh, provide the answer to those questions when they come up? Because I, I just when I'm reading, I, it's just nice to have like the full um, uh, summary of what happened. Okay. Yeah, I think. Probably, and with that yeah, comment, short, I, I would short like answers to, to questions. Just would very be good. short. Yeah. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. trying. We're trying not Keep to brief. become too verbose yeah, too in the minutes. Yeah. Exactly. But uh, Sherry, if you could mm -hmm. take care just of that. Just as a that comment won't... for the future. Okay. That's all. And would you accept that as? Oh, oh yes, oh. I, 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 yes. I mean, it's fine as it is. I just uh, it came up when I was reading through, and I just wanted to request for future make a minutes. request for future minutes, not necessarily okay. to change this. Okay. So we have a motion and a second on the table. Any other discussion of the motion to accept the minutes? Then let's have a roll call, Sherry. Lottis? Yes. Nolan? Yes. Pelosi? Yes. Powers? Yes. Great. Okay. Item two, Planning Commission appointment to the Committee to Approve Public Art. Interestingly, um, I didn't know this. I didn't realize there was a Planning Commissioner on that committee, mm -hmm. uh, but it's been John Merck and forever. And now John Merck is not with us on the commission, mm -hmm. sadly. And we should appoint another member of the Planning Commission to serve a two-year term on the Committee to Approve public art. Um, could we hear from staff first? Yes, thank you, um, Commission. Uh, like you just uh, pointed out, John Merck has served on Kappa for quite a while, and Kappa was very appreciative of him uh, and sad to see him go, but they're excited about uh, who they will get to work with next. Um, essentially, the role Kappa plays uh, is that projects that are subject to public art uh, public art projects, um, and there's a there's an ordinance specific to public art projects. Um, pro those projects are reviewed by this committee, which is made up of um, um, 
a uh, planning commissioner and then a, a couple of the arts commissioners. And they're reviewed um, both uh, as a concept and then they, they um, after the, uh, the committee approves them, or reviews them, approves them, and then once the projects are built and put in, there's also a site visit and a final approval just to make sure it matches up to the concept. Uh, the, com the CAPA does meet, um, they don't have a standard scheduled meeting. Uh, so we tend to, when a project comes in, we try to find a time that meets for everybody or that works for everybody, but uh, there won't be like just a once a month standard meeting. Um, and we have three pending projects right now. Um, the SANE Center has a piece of public art that was approved by the CAPA with John Merck, but it needs to be final signed, sign off. Uh, the Ojai Valley Inn has the farmhouse tables going in as well. And um, there is a third project, um, Kepa Public Art. I'm blanking on the third one. Um, but there's there's three pending projects at this moment that, uh, oh, the, uh, the gates at the museum, I don't know how I could have forgotten those. But uh, <laughs> yeah, which are installed, but the Kappa still has to do the final review of those. Oh, it's even been in the newspaper already. I don't <laughs> mm, know what they, did they the grand would do opening. at this point. Yeah, they're 99% there. There's a couple of trim pieces that oh. different Kappa members had asked to be um, completed before we do the final sign off. So um, those three projects are pending as we speak. We're probably going to try to start meeting in the next couple weeks on those. But this is actually probably as busy as it gets. We typically have maybe one or two projects a year that go through CAPA. I've been, I've been following City Council, which follows CAPA for mm -hmm. a long time, and it's rare that you hear anything about CAPA. Yeah. Um, most of the public art is a result of commercial development, which we don't have a whole lot of, mm -hmm. or in the case of the museum, I guess, development on PL yeah. property. Um, but it's, it ought to be a fun thing to do if you're interested in public art and, and want to occasionally dip your toe into <laughs> another meeting on behalf of the city. Mm -hmm. Is anyone here interested in doing that? I have a question. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, I could possibly be interested, or I am a little bit. <laughs> I don't want to overextend myself because I know I do complete streets already, but I am interested. Um, but the question that I had is, occasionally I'll be involved with one of the projects that come through. I'm not, you know, it's occasionally. And um, I'm guessing I would have to recuse myself, wouldn't I, if, if it came through, if, if I was involved with the project? I could see a situation so, where you'd have to recuse. Yeah, so it may, yeah, okay. Uh, that could. So I don't know. Um, well, you, but you do you do landscape architecture, and and public art is a a separate thing. One one might envision some sort of a a conflict, but a, it would be a real stretch for me to figure that. The one that jumps out to I, me is that the business owners are the developers sometimes do come in and ask for time extensions for um, approval to pay the fee in lieu of, of performing the public art mm -hmm. and I could see an argument that if you're working for that developer that you should right. be part of that decision. oh you would be inclined to grant the, yeah. the right. delay yeah, yeah. so okay. I, I just thought well you know is that could that potentially be a problem and if there's only I mean, not that I'm involved in every project, commercial project, I'm not, but sure. one of the ones that you just mentioned, I am. Yeah. So, um, yeah, may, it might be better for somebody else to. However, you would still have a quorum, right? We'd still have a quorum. Kappa. I mean, it's only three members, but one yeah. out of three would be the. We'd still have a quorum. Out. Kappa has a preference, and I, I mm -hmm. you know, I've explained to them that uh, it's not a requirement, but they have a preference that they they like to meet with all three so because there's no like set time frames they'll say we'll wait a couple of days to get all three together so i don't know their inclination to to move forward with two out of three um i do think it would happen very infrequently but um so the, yeah. Yeah. yeah and there's never been a um, a conflict of interest situation prior there hasn't um John's been on for as long as I can mm. remember, or longer than I've been here, obviously, and, and he never had one in that time. Mm. Well, practically speaking, practically speaking, though, it could work. 
I mean, it's not it's not impossible, yeah. and you would still have a quorum, and you could still take a vote and and reach a resolution. Yeah. With one member um, recusing. Yeah. 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 Okay. So it really comes down to yes or no. Are you interested in in taking that seat? I think I'm going to pass because I. I, I, I may potentially, I'm thinking of some other commercial projects that I may be involved in, and I think it would be better to have someone who more reliably would be present for their okay. meetings. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm not detecting tremendous enthusiasm on the rest of the commission. I, I'm in, I'm in, I am enthusiastic. Um, however, I, I <laughs> might... About taking I, that position. But... <laughs> No, I am, but and I would be having to recuse myself because I I'm foreseeing I'm foreseeing um, being involved with submitting some public art projects. Well, the, that the would definitely itself. be a conflict. Yes. Uh huh. So okay. I don't want to do that. Um, do we have any indication that that either of the absent commissioners tonight would not be here on the sixth? I don't uh, think no. we have any notice of that yet. No. Um, I'd, I'd feel better about yeah. postponing the decision mm -hmm. until we have all six of us here and two more candidates for the slot. <laughs> there you go. That sounds good. I'll also um, think more about the conflict of interest question because I am having some kind of second thoughts about it. So I'll, I'll yeah. we'll think more about that. We'll have we'll have. Well, a if Ray if Ray is in a position to submit potential public art, that one's that problematic. Would, that's a very clear. <laughs> yeah potential conflict no. um, but okay um, then I would I would recommend that we table this until the oh, next right. meeting do we need a vote on that no, okay we'll uh, continue this item to the next meeting then I thought we'd just assign someone that wasn't here since they're <laughs> 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 well, yeah. that that happens a lot and then you <laughs> You wind up with unhappy people. By the way, yeah. While gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, our next our next agenda item is future agenda items. Um, the Planning Commissioners Academy, March sixth through the eighth in Long Beach. We have two of our commissioners already registered. Um, I think that's, I think we had three the last time. Is it too late to, I know I haven't registered because I, I'll wait till you stand. My, my schedule for the next two months is sufficiently uncertain that I don't want to commit the city to paying for a registration for me for this year. Um, and so mm -hmm. I, I'm not in a position to, to uh, go to that particular academy. Is, mm -hmm. And I know Kathy L., you've already signed up. Um, are you interested in doing that sort of thing, Ray? Mm -mm, not this year. Okay. I'm interested. Um, I just had I was kind of waiting because of my work schedule. Yeah. So Sherry, there's still time to to sign up. I'm not too late. Okay. okay. I'll I yeah. I just I have think, to finalize. I think last everything. year it was Bobby and John and I went. Okay. Um, and in the interest of conserving city resources, mm -hmm. you know, if we keep it to three, uh, that's probably plenty for any given for any given meeting. You mean the year before, probably? Wasn't last year when we missed the deadline on registration or something when it was no, in Monterey? That was for a, a different event. Oh, it wasn't was for the academy training. It was oh, for okay. a different, separate one that wasn't approved yeah. by oh, the, okay. the... I remember going down to a hotel somewhere near LAX mm -hmm. for this meeting mm -hmm. for the academy last year. Okay. Um, pardon me? 
Like if it's if it's at the convention center, I've been there on aerospace stuff several times. But if it's the hotels are equally nice. There's a Marriott, there's a Weston, there's a Hilton down there. I think that are all very top end. All right, item four then, planning commissioner. So so we will we will revisit the planning commissioner's academy at the next meeting if there's still time to register by the 6th of February. All right. It fills up sometime. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or, or perhaps, Sherry, you could send an email to the two commissioners that are not with us tonight and just ask. Of course, you have that. done that, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the likelihood is that both of them would say no because they haven't said yes yet. <clears throat> right, but the others. The only other is Chester. Isn't it? Oh, that's right. Yes, so yeah. Chester's the only other one. Right, yeah. okay. Then <laughs> that's right. One's already signed up. All right, well, let's go on to item four then, Planning Commission Committee Reports and Comments. Um, we have you down. Vice Chair is talking about the City Council on the 8th of January. Yes, and I was hoping to go over my notes before I came, but I was um, organizing my office, and of course when I'm organizing, I can't find anything. But at the <laughs> last minute, I found it, so I didn't get to review. So pardon me if I pause every so often. Um, there was a, a wonderful uh, presentation um, by the Clean Power Alliance and I'm sure many of you have received a postcard in the mail um, providing information on that. I think it's very exciting. Michelle Ellison did that presentation. Um, let's see, I'm just gonna do a brief one. Oh, I, I just wanted to mention this. I, the sheriff got up and spoke. And this is before all the rain potentially had started this last week. And he had mentioned that um, right after the fire last year, it was, um, deemed that if we got a half an inch of rain per hour, that would um, mean that there would be evacu uh, mandatory evacuations. But he said they had gone out with, I believe it was a geologist recently, you know, and combed the hillsides and due to the amount of um, plant regrowth, regrowth yeah. regeneration, it's now at three quarters of an inch per hour. So just in case in the event, so interestingly enough, like I got a, um, um, a notice yesterday for voluntary evacuation and to pack your bags and be ready for mandatory. So I was, but we never had that three wow. quarters of an inch. So no, no. my bags are still packed, <laughs> <laughs> just in case. But um, anyway, I just thought that was, you know, good to know. It's um, nice to see that they do change the yes. criteria for evalu evacuation Ex based on mm -hmm. actual, yeah, yeah. information. Um, let me see what else I've got here. Um, I know this might this might pertain to us, but um, Councilmember Wyrick pulled for discussion the um, or for a motion for next meeting. Um, and this was the discussion on planning commission uh, commissioner terms and absences. So I'm not sure where that's going to go, but I thought we might want to know that. He may wish to <laughs> tell us tonight. Okay, and then um, they also went over the. Um, Study session for adoption of the 2016 California Building Code and Amendments allowing for increased fire protection. And uh, discussion was about Class A roofs, uh, reinforcement for property maintenance, um, a maintenance code in f that might come up in a future meeting. And um, well, my writing's so small I can't even read it. But anyway, <laughs> that was that was important. And. Um, the other thing that came up was the um, invasive species tree policy, which passed. And uh, Greg Grant, our public works director, did the presentation on that. And that had to do predominantly with Mexican fan palms. And um, an arrangement where they would like to work with adjacent property owners um, to reduce the seed bank of um, Mexican fan palms adjacent to city property. And that passed. And uh, let's see here. 
oh, this also came up, and that was a discussion about um, zoning text amendment for conditionally allowable uses in the M1 and MPT, MPD zoning. And um, that, let me see if I wrote anything else on that. Oh, just can't remember exactly what came up with that. Do you remember exactly what the that final? Was, it was a request from the Airstream trailer park folk. Right, but it wasn't. To, to uh, be able to mm -hmm. have events where alcohol is served. Like in hotel, motel, that, short like term hotel, lodging. Like hotel, motel, where they could do it themselves rather than having to get a special event permit. That's right. And get Thank someone you. to cater it, which they have done on a few occasions in the past. Right. And, and even though they did present it, it wasn't for them specifically. It would be no, they were potentially for, zoning for, yeah, the entire and, area. Yeah, and what was the upshot of that? Oh, and if I, now that I remember, I believe it was Councilmember Weirich who had said something about doing um, a, kind of an area. It got shot down. It, that got shot down. Yeah, it went because back and forth. I thought it was a good one, but um, okay. I, I read that and I thought to myself, you know, a, a pilot project a test. of limited duration mm -hmm. might have been a possibility. But um, All right, let so me just far see. nothing, right? Mm -hmm. No, something happened. Okay. And let's see. All right. I think Stephanie had what we did take action of in some way. It's Suzanne. And uh, there we go. Uh, Thank I, you. Go ahead. <laughs> M1 MPD will come before the Planning Commission as a staff report to discuss the text amendment on a future okay, there agenda we go. item. Thank you. Okay, I didn't. I didn't see it on the future agenda items. Uh, so, Mr. Conley and I were discussing that this morning, Good. and we are tentatively um, looking at February sixth, but we have not confirmed that date yet. Okay. Good. Good. There also what also the interesting that was brought up being sure the complete streets was that they wanted to bring the ATP grant back on January twenty second to council for final discussion. So we'll have to see what happens with that. And um, that that is currently scheduled for the twenty second. Oh, it is scheduled. Okay, good. Um, Then another thing was also to bring back was the signal summer stop sign to bring that back to council for community input. There's also, and I believe you can correct me if this got scheduled or not, but they were asking for on February 12th a Creek Road presentation. This had to do with you know traffic volume, speed, accidents, and what have you. Even though it's not within the city it's limit, not within the city limits, and not under the control of the city council. No, but they, I think, with the reason they were bringing it was because. People are going to Ojai, people are coming from Ojai, and adjacency and context, I believe. So, um, and Just yeah. on a lark, I, I went mm -hmm. to Google Maps and asked for a route from my home down to somewhere in Camarillo, and it told me not to go down 33, but to zigzag through town till I could get to Creek Road. Mm. Right. And then try to make that near, near fatal left turn onto 33 right. south from Creek Road. Yeah, you hit on one of the things is th some of the, some ideas were tossed around to kind of discuss further at that February meeting mm -hmm. and you know a couple of them that were thrown out were you know contacting Google and seeing That's if right. they would remove it. Yeah. Uh, and, and us contacting them as the city even though it's not in the city. Um, so Right. Right. And then the other thing was the um, the council actually um, you know, voted and agreed on council representatives to local county and regional boards. That took place also. And I think that's generally what I had in my notes with a couple other things that I wrote too small. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which isn't a good excuse, but it's true. Well, thank you for that. <laughs> um, next meeting, we will have two reports. Uh, Mr. Powers on the city council meeting next week and Ms. Nolan, and uh, as Sherry pointed out to me, the MAC meeting is actually January 21st, not the 18th. Oh, and that's gonna be for me, correct? That's for you, yeah. It's at tab four in your book. Oh, tab four. 
Oh, January 21st, I'll bet, is President's Day. Or Martin Luther King Day. Martin Luther King Day. Or Martin, oh. So will they cancel that then? Oh, President's Day is February, that's right. Okay, good. I just want to make a note to myself, just a yeah. question mark that I may have that. Or, yeah, Steve Offerman will know whether they're going to yeah. have the meeting or not. Yeah. And if they cancel, then you're up for the next back meeting. Mm -hmm. Great, great times. All right, and we have arrived at the highlight of our session. The, uh, when can I make comments? Or I think you're presaging me. Is that right? <laughs> okay. I'll be quick. I know we want to get out before uh, 6.30 maybe. Anyway, unless you have questions. I'm sorry. The name. I get alliteration. Psychosis in my head. I'm getting old. My memory is not like it was. Age-related, age yes. You know, it does, have you noticed that? You know, you, certain quick oh, details just It doesn't there. run nearly as fast not, as it used to, Bill. Not nearly as well as it used to. <laughs> no. Uh, at the risk of going past 6.30, I do want to say that yesterday's um, meeting appeal before the Board of Supervisors, I'm not sure how everybody else felt about it. I was really proud to be a citizen of Ojai. Proud of our staff, proud of the volunteers, the concerns. You know, it's, it's what this city stands for, and I'm so proud that we do in terms of integrity in the process for environmental uh, review and, and CEQA, uh, public deliberation, um, and calling out, frankly, some questionable tactics or protocols on the part of county planning. I think that's, there's only, that's all we can say about it. And um, change happens when people step up and say something. It was a split vote. Nevertheless, I thought we acquitted ourselves well, as well as the people from Seafrog that were there and other people. But there are some real systemic issues raised when you see county planning and, frankly, um, theories of the primacy of staff judgment over general plan provisions, over which, which ultimately, uh, in my view, disenfranchises citizens, because general plans are established by public process and approved by elected officials. Not to mention disenfranchising the Board of Supervisors. Yes, well, elected officials. And staff basically say, we can just decide it's, the provision is not significant on our own without public process. For the sake of uh, those who may watch this and don't know what topic you're speaking of. The appeal of the Bentley oil field. Thank you. Um, uh, modified CUP for an additional 20 years of operation with a full-time flare after operating for, what, close to 10 years? 16 years, 16 years uh, um, in violation of their CUP. So again, um, it, it, the importance is not the Bentley family and, and their, you know, and what they do. What's important is the integrity of how we protect environmental quality in this valley and in the county as a whole, and how we protect the integrity of the of public deliberation and public processes. It has to be not just fair, but obviously fair. Right, in, in public accountability. So I, I was, I was, I, I was very happy. I, I know, I don't know if if you wrote sold the write up in the Ventura County Star, um, which more or less was fair, I guess. I don't know what, you know. But nevertheless, um, you know, we have a situation where um, uh, we took issue with some of the processes associated with protecting the integrity of the, um, of the character of this valley and, and how it's impacted by review processes. Remember, this is the, uh, the same county planning and legal process that uh, for years asserted that um, uh, short-term rentals were legal because we were just going to call them accessory uses. I'm saying we in terms of county planning. No public process, no public deliberation, no public hearings, just, well, until the supervisors do anything, it's legal because there are uh, short-term rentals and accessory use. I can't find anyone else in the state that came up with that theory. I'm being very frank because, as you can say, I'm a little irritated. It's only wrong if you get caught. Huh? 
well, so I think that it's, it, 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 it shows the, uh, um, I think, a healthy interplay between cities and counties. And I think, uh, again, um, I think it was worth every penny of taxpayer dollars for us to pursue this appeal um, and document the, the situation. Um, I mean, some people may take issue with that, but it, it, it's really not about the Bentley family and their partnership and their, and their ranch, and they are absolutely wonderful stewards of the land and longtime residents of, the, of this valley uh, and, and integral members of our community, but there was a better way to deal with this process, and that's really what we were uh, appealing. So um, enough said of that, but I just thought it, it was worth saying in this venue. You know, uh, James, did you have anything to change or add to what I said? Or the I, one thing that hit me afterwards, I was bitter about it for a little bit, but um, mm -hmm. one thing that hit me was that. Our issue from the beginning has been the lack of analysis right. and information on this. Right. And something they said a few times yesterday, we did additional analysis in response to the city's request. Exactly. And we disputed some of that analysis. Um, still, we had Dr. Colomay there, and, and he, you know, poked some holes in some of it. But it wasn't a waste of time. It no, was, just to get the, the, even if it was a flawed analysis, mm -hmm. they were forced to do the analysis. Yeah, they did, you know, air quality, traffic measures, all the, all those things. And that's they had what, to do some heroic yeah. massaging of what the baseline was to get there. Yeah. But, it, you know, again, I think you're, you're exactly right. We were, we, just by forcing them to go through the exercise mm -hmm. is a first process, I think, in putting some better accountability into to the system. To set a standard for the next one. Yeah. yeah. So, Letting people know that that the citizens are watching what they do. And our little city and that's continues to have an outside impact, I think, for the good on this county as a whole. Yep. And be, it's because of the quality of our citizens, you know, that stand, you know, that stand together with these concerns. So I'm just really proud of our city, you know, frankly. I agree. I watched the whole thing. And um, at the city, all the city representatives Anybody who spoke for the city did an outstanding job. And uh, um, there was a lot of uh, problems in terms of getting documentation. The county posted uh, a staff report um, at approximately 8 o'clock. Uh, I believe it was Monday night. Mm -hmm. It appeared, and then it disappeared. Mm -hmm. And um, so it makes it extremely difficult, and you wonder, how does this happen? Right. Um, <laughs> but it makes it extremely difficult for anybody to actually really uh, have documentation to base comments on that are based in, in yeah. right. um, some sort of fact. They, and they didn't even post the city's letter. Pardon? Uh, they did, they, it's very erratic about even posting the, city's, the, la the second city's uh, letter, the appeal right. letter. Right. That city. was hidden, the city's most recent Middle was hidden, mm -hmm. and um, and also I think there was a lot of ob obfuscation going on in terms of what the the base the whole commentary about baseline mm -hmm. was related to CEQA. Yep. However, when you are reviewing a conditional use permit, the project is the project. It's You're not supposed to piecemeal. It's it. It's, it's in. They it's were piecemealing as an art form. And and there is no grandfathering going on. Right. The entire project. It was a de novo hearing. Uh, all of it was under review, and there was no setting aside anything that had been occurring right. for the last 20 years or whatever. Right. All up for review. It's supposed to be based on current information. What's going on? What are the current laws? What are what what has changed over the last twenty years? Right. So anyway, that was. I'm uh, sure you. I was it. really upset by that. But yeah. Yeah. So, I think it was worth the exercise. Uh, I guess that's what I'm Indeed. I'm saying, Agreed. Commissioner Luddies. I think it was worth getting all of that on the record and putting a little sunlight on it. You know, even though we ultimately had our appeal denied, but I tell you, three two split. And I think one of the one of the supervisors uh, was on the fence. Well, so you have anyway. to take baby steps sometimes. Yes, but the next time this situation arises, if it does, um, 
I think people are on notice. There's going to be a lot more public scrutiny yes. of what goes yeah. on. And and uh, yeah, I think we, um, yeah, I, absolutely. You know, because we are stewards of this entire valley. Even we have even with the limited um, city limits, and I very much believe that, given our special role as defined by LAFCO, in terms of the sphere of influence in the area of interest. And I, I take that seriously. I think it's been neglected for a while, but I think it we're, we are asserting that role of being stewards of the valley as a whole. And um, it, it's not a shame to say it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and then uh, coming up, yes, uh, I pulled the attendance report because it wasn't an action item. And there was discussion at our joint meeting about maybe a need to make some text amendments in terms of how we look at, you know, um, at membership least, and stuff. At least define what an excused absence is, please. Well, so <laughs> we will be discussing uh, whether we take action on any of the attendance issues. That's up to council to decide whether to take that action or not. Absolutely. Yep. And also to look at the um, a text amendment to the, uh, the the foundation elements of the planning commission, namely the uh, uh, the, the the terms and the definition of the. Uh, of the of the members you know oh, the composition of the right commission. yeah right okay. so I just wanted to say yes that is coming up and um, we'll see how it plays out is all of that coming at the meeting next week yes or? okay great yes it will we'll, we'll look forward to seeing we'll see how that. how it how it plays out and then uh, hopefully you're gonna have a busy year um, and uh, you know there's gonna be a lot of uh, a lot of issues coming before this Commission this year I can, I mean. Well, we can. Give us a hint. Yeah. Oh, we can, we can see Oh, I it. can't wait till the Chaparral School asks for a rezone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, there are, there's a whole list of topics here. If you go to well, our tab true. three, I looked at, I looked at there's a, and, and I, I compliment staff again and, yeah. and Luke in particular for presenting mm -hmm. things, topics mm -hmm. that are of interest to the commission and what the status is between the commission and the city council, right. so that we can so, again, do what we can to the, influence. All, you know, things. the time you put in, it's important. It's part of how we govern our our beautiful city. Sure. And, um, again, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Um, any last comments by any commission member? Yes, sir. Thank you, Bill. I was very curious. I didn't get to watch it or attend last night at the appeal and um, onward and upward. Um, I guess I have a question if, if God forbid something occur like a, a gas truck crash or something. I mean, is there any ev evidentiary circumstances that might occur where it would come up to revoke that decision? Pipe breaks, truck goes over something. How does that there's, there's going to be legal liability in any case, but I think once a CUP is granted, it sticks to that, par that property for whatever the term of that CUP is. And, yeah, that, and that would be very difficult to overturn. One of the things we had asked for at different points was a shorter period, because right now what they approved was a 20-year extension, and uh, yeah. for a variety of reasons we had concerns about that, but, but that's what ended up getting approved. It's through 2035. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, I wasn't planning to ask that, but after hearing Mr. Weirich, I wanted to ask that. Um, I just have a brief announcement about something that's coming up, and I wanted to um, publicly speak it, and that's a, um, it's, it's an event that's being hosted by the uh, Ojai Valley Green Coalition. And um, it's called Fire Safe and Earthquake Resilient Home Design. Um, I will actually be facilitating that panel discussion. There'll also be presentations. It's on Sunday, January 27th from 3 to 5 p.m. at the Matillaha Junior High Auditorium at 703 El Paseo Road. Uh, I'm just reading here so I can give you a flavor of what's going to happen. Um, Ventura County in the Ojai Valley has the opportunity to become a leader in creating pilot projects that serve as an example of fire safe and earthquake resilient structures suitable for Southern California 
today. Um, I want to insert that, you know, we because of the fires, we're looking at fires, fi fire safety mostly. But uh, in actuality, earthquakes can cause a lot more damage than a fire can, and we never know when those are coming. Um, and, you know, even, even uh, uh, people really schooled in building codes um, say, you know, you want to build to what the next iteration of an earthquake code might be because they're they're constantly changing every time there's a quake and you know even up in Oregon they just found a new fault up there and um, you know it's natural disasters are kind of like insurance it's based on a big if <laughs> uh, but preparedness is also a good thing to have um, so this event on Jan January 27th um, fire safe uh, and earthquake resilient home design will offer tips and guidelines for residents looking to build safely in an environment proven to be susceptible to wildfire and earthquakes. Um, experts in the field will give presentations and to uh, discuss topics such as uh, this resiliency building methods such as reinforced adobe, straw bale, rammed earth, and other building materials um, that are you know, renewable. Um, recyclable um, and also proven I'm gonna say traditional building <laughs> um, because traditionally our ancestors built in these ways um, are, are last for hundreds of years <laughs> and don't break down as as quickly as timber built homes and then the pros and cons of our current Ventura County building codes and the cost effectiveness or not of natural building methods and the environmental advantages of these approaches. So I'm really excited. Um, I personally am producing this event and facilitating it with the graces of the Green Coalition. And we have an amazing panel, Art Ludwig of Oasis Designs, who's one of the pioneers and gurus of, of uh, reinforced, uh, well, gray water first, a lot of people know him for that. But he, he's actually um, working with the county on reinforced adobe walls and um, next month uh, through a grant with Cal Poly uh, they're doing seismic testing on this material to produce hard data how it will hold up um, with earthquakes and then Sasha Rab uh, Rabin from Quail Springs Permacultural Center which is where they're going to be doing that testing and they've already built some adobe and, and cob and straw bale up there uh, Dustan Khalili from Cal Earth. Um, some people may, may know of his father, uh, Nader Khalili. They have uh, in Temecula, they're building super adobe structures. He's going to be there. Jane Carroll, who's a local architectural designer, she built, uh, designed the straw bale and council house up in um, with the living roof up at Ojai Foundation. And those are two of the structures that survived the fire up there on the Ojai Foundation. Um, she's part of the panel. Uh, Mayor Johnny Johnston's going to be on it, and also Matt Wyatt, who's the Ventura County Building and Safety District Manager uh, 2 of District 2, is going to be on it. So we're hoping it gives a, br a broad overview of fire safe and earthquake resilient home design, and it'll be the first in a series of four um, looking at our current conventions and what we can change and possible code update and like that. And there'll be Q&A. Uh, each presenter will also uh, do a, a visual presentation, and then we'll have a panel discussion. So thanks for your time. I know that was a bit lengthy. Very good. Well, that sounds like they'll be covering a lot of topics that people in the city should be interested in. Any other announcements or comments or anything? Uh, barring that, at 647, we are adjourned. Thank you all for being here.